Hello and welcome to Stoppage Time, episode 12 from the MLS UK show. I'm Henry Hewitt and as always I'm joined by... Elliot Holman. Uh, it's good to be back, it's good to see you as well. Yeah, well I've been on holiday for a few weeks, you've been uh, hanging out with the likes of Liam Ridgewell, uh, which was very good by the way, I enjoyed listening to that while I was by the, by the beach, drinking a pina colada, uh, it was nice to catch up on what you've been up to. Yes, it's alright mate, I'll... I'll do all. I'll do all the work. I'll do the heavy lifting. You know, chatting to the, chatting to the big names, and then. Um, oh no, wait! You edited it while you're on holiday. I stand corrected. Hey, I've got to do something. I can't switch <laughs> off. But it annoys the hell out of Poppy. But I can't switch off. <laughs> uh, but uh, thanks for all the response we've had as well. Uh, our Liam Ridgewell, Andy, and Joy episodes that we put out. Uh, while I was away during the international break. Uh, very well received, and thanks to them too for coming on as well. Um, both just love MLS. It's so refreshing, especially because they both come from these shows. Well, Ian Jai was born in America, but spent his childhood here, so he is, an, he is a Brit, really. Um, but both love MLS, both love talking about it, um, and uh, really nice guys as well, weren't they? Yeah, and I just I felt like I could have just spoken to them for ages, and it it kind of felt it, it always has done, and the the MLS in the UK has always felt like a little club um, that no one really knows about. And while that is getting you know bigger and bigger, and more people are joining, it's there's something really satisfying about speaking to speaking to those guys, especially because they were involved in it way back, um, way before um, you know we even started this podcast. So um, yeah, got some really really interesting tales from them learned a lot from them as well so if you haven't checked them out um go and have a look of course yes uh if you're watching on youtube uh, don't forget to subscribe and look back on our videos uh, and if you listen on your podcast provider do exactly the same uh, but you can listen to it instead um right we're now i know i'm back from holiday and normally we would come back from a break doing a full episode but we've got a very busy week this week elliot tomorrow as we speak so uh, we're speaking on monday tuesday uh, you're joining the 31 club. Yeah. Do you know what? <laughs> you just went Elliot tomorrow. And I was like, what? I forgot to be honest <laughs> with you. Uh, and I think that's um, pretty solid approach. Uh, the approach everyone takes once it gets above 30. Um, not particularly excited. It's the first time ever that I've not booked the day off work. Cause I just thought, what's the point? Um, yeah. It's not. Yeah. We don't talk about it. <laughs> we don't talk about Bruno. We don't talk about 31. Um, no, I get what you mean. I was 31 last year. And yeah, it just it's a, you have your big 30. Well, we both had 30 during lockdowns and, and stuff. So it weren't that big. Um, and then, yeah, 31. It's just like, meh, next big one's 40, I guess, now. But we are officially, as we've said before, we are officially veterans now. We are officially uh, old enough to technically join MLS in the retirement league. Um, so let's think of us as, I'll be a, who? let's see, I'll be a, I don't, I don't think I'd be a signing for Atlanta. I think I'd be more of a, I'll go for Sporting KC. Who, who are you signing for? Well, I'm definitely not a DP. Um, so I'm just one of those, one of those aging guys lurking around on the minimum salary. Um, you know, not, not causing too much trouble, but, um, but decent enough that I would just sort of get strung along for another year. <laughs> so let's say Columbus Crew. You can be a Columbus Crew. Uh, a Dom Dwyer, I believe, is the. Uh... <laughs> um, I tell you what, it, 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 I can tell I'm getting old now. Is because on Wednesday I'm going to watch Elton John. So uh, I can't wait actually. But that tells me that I'm no longer in my twenties. I'm looking up. <laughs> Um, and I'm going to watch Elton John in Bristol at Bristol City Stadium. Actually, my dad went to the uh, went to see Elton John at the Norwich gig, which was at the stadium, Carrow Road, and uh, he said it was easily the best performance of the season at the stadium. So, uh, <laughs> I I don't doubt either. So, we could do an MLS UK show live to about two people at Carrow Road, and that would be then the second best performance yeah, of the season. That's true. <laughs> Um, right, let's talk about MLS then, because that's what we're here to do. It's stoppage time. We look at the four biggest news stories of the last seven days, but we're expanding it because we've not been here, and there has been some massive stories in MLS. The first one we have got to talk about is the news of Apple TV's TV deal for MLS. So, 
as uh, when this got announced, I text you, we were a bit uh, in the US, it was exciting, but here in the UK, we were a bit like, wow, this is amazing, but does it include us? It does include us. We can get subscriptions. We both have iPhones, so we, we know about Apple anyway and Apple TV. Uh, I've been watching Ted Lasso on there and the morning show, so I'm very excited to now uh, add San Jose versus Houston Dynamo at 3 a.m. on a on a Sunday morning uh, to that. But uh, for you, Elliot, what does this mean for you? Well, I mean, in the in the all the excitement uh, of the Apple TV thing, I've uh, I've just remembered that I need to hit record on my video. So, hello, thanks for joining us. A um, few minutes too late, but hey. um, the Apple TV thing is huge, and it's because even before we were doing this podcast, to watch an MLS game was so difficult. And the point of this podcast was once we discovered how great the MLS was and we wanted to share the share the word, spread the word, it became really difficult because we didn't actually know, no one knew how to find it or where to see it. And obviously Sky shows some games, but um, ultimately if you want to watch an MLS game over here, it's a dodgy stream or um, you can actually uh, watch it on betting sites as well on like a tiny pokey little screen. And it's 2022 and you know while it may be 2023 that the deal is going to kick in I think this is really really crucial not just for us making it really easy for us to be able to see every game of every team which is great but it's crucial in terms of growing this league and making it accessible yeah I would agree and I think uh, the fact that the the getting 250 million uh dollars a year over 10 years as well I mean it's that the deal at the moment with ESPN and Fox and the the like is ninety million a year. So it's going to bring more money into the clubs. Of course, some of that money is going to go to um, sort of MLS producing their own in house show, which is great because you know even here we watch it on Sky Sports and uh, you know Phil Blacker who does the commentary does a great job, but you're still very restricted because you come on to uh, a couple of minutes before kickoff, you get pre packaged sort of halftime videos that you can put out. Um, but still, you're very for somebody who's watching the league for the first time. You don't get much information about the teams, about the players, about how they're lining up. So I think to have this and to introduce it worldwide, um, you know, to an audience where you know, like you said, there we managed to get some streams for what's going on in the states, and they've got people in studios. They're talking about it. They're bigging it up. It's it's like we get for the Premier League. It's going to be brilliant. So um, on one hand, we've got that. I have got to say on the other hand, though, uh, I feel it is right for us to mention, especially because we've just had Ian Joy on the show and we love Ray Hudson. This does mean that the local stations won't be providing a service anymore. So our thoughts go to all them broadcasters that are potentially losing their jobs, even though you'd like to think that MLS will pick up uh, talented broadcasters like Ian and like Ray. Um, but as a whole for the league and for us here in the UK, this is so exciting. Um, with the added money that each team's going to get, um, which as if, if Don Garber keeps on adding teams, it's going to diminish for each uh, each club. Um, but do you think now that we can push forward, especially going into the World Cup, the salary cap could go up or it could even go? These P spots, they could offer more money. Could this be not only off the pitch, but on the pitch, the best thing to happen to the league? I think so. And I think a lot of the conversations we have and have had on the podcast this season has been about players leaving. And, I, and I've mentioned we need to do something, anything to, to try and uh, get some more money in and around this league so that we can... Uh, yeah, I'm not saying we're going we're going to stop Matt Turner from going to Arsenal because Arsenal are always going to have more money than any MLS club and, and most clubs in the world. But if we can hang on to players that we believe are you know, fairly average, middle-of-the-road players that are yet to develop, um, if we can stop them from going to Europe and sitting on a bench somewhere uh, and get them playing in MLS, it's going to be better not only for, for us, for the league, for the clubs, but for the US men's national team and for the Canadian uh, men's national team as well because they're going to be playing more regularly. So in general, I think however they utilize this money whatever rules they create or, or don't create uh, or loosen around this um it'll be welcomed uh, you've only I, I we joke about football manager but um i've got a bit of a, a football manager game going on at the minute which i started in february and i well, while i was on holiday and i put it down again for a few months and i started playing it again the other day because we had some nice weather and i thought who needs to do any work and 
if you actually put yourself in the position of, uh, you know, the front office of a, of a club in MLS, it's so hard to get all around the rules, to get across them, to, to put a roster together that it actually fits every single rule. Um, and that's mainly based on the salary cap and the complicated rules of, of buying down salaries, etc. The more money we pump into this league, the better the product's going to be. I believe that because these um, front offices are so, so brilliant at building rosters around really, really difficult, tight rules. If they were released a little bit or loosened a little bit, just think what they could do. Yeah, exactly. We could, uh, and that's the thing, we're already seeing, um, you know, DPs come in and uh, and top quality international players, like we're going to be talking about uh, LAFC's new signing very soon. But, um, you know, for, I think it is that next level below. If you can um, then mean that we can bring in you know, yes, yeah, some players from Europe that are on maybe not quite ready for the top five leagues or, or even at the bottom of the Premier League. If you have the money then to go, well, you can, you know, if you want to stay fighting relegation in the Premier League, you can do. But if you want to come over to the uh, US and fight for MLS then and have this great life, then that's also there as well. So, uh, yeah, it could bring so many options and it's so exciting. One thing I did notice, though, which uh, I'm going to I'm gonna actually miss, actually, slightly, um, you know, the, the schedule at the moment is that they are going to be having sat- matches are going to be basically Saturday and Wednesday. I do enjoy a Sunday evening match, I've got to say, so I will miss that. However, if it means the kickoff times are going to be at the actual time that they advertise, then I'm all for it. Yeah, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that works. Sunday Sunday night games, if it's six pm our time, seven pm, eight pm, fine. The Sunday night games, if you know, if it's Orlando and you desperately do want to watch it, um, and I'm getting up at four am, if it doesn't kick off till half twelve, it, that's that's not something I'm going to miss. To be honest with you. Uh, right, let's move on to number two on the stories we're talking about this week. And the World Cup venues have been announced. It was last week as we speak. Uh, it was the razzmatazz. Each each city, each state had uh, their own sort of thing going on. And uh, just like at a, a presidential election night, uh, you've got some that are uh, partying on into the night and others that are uh, walking away with the tails between the legs. So a list of venues... Uh, our list of cities and states that they're going to be using in the US, Atlanta, Boston, Dallas, Houston, Kansas City, LA, Miami, New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia, San Francisco and Seattle. And then in Canada, Toronto and Vancouver. And there's some in Mexico as well. Um, what are your thoughts on this, Elliot? Do you think, I mean, obviously, I guess you were hoping Orlando would get a spot. They've missed out. Are these the right places or would you like to see in Orlando or DC do you think one's missed out that should have had one I think there was always going to be someone that someone that missed out because obviously uh, I'll be honest with you and this is this is embarrassing um but I've actually booked accommodation in Orlando already for uh um for the world cup in in the states thinking get ahead of the game uh so that was pointless um but you do have to feel like there are certain places that have missed out that was always going to be the case if you put Orlando in there good stadium to be fair it's not Exploria we should we should point out it's the Camping World Stadium which is the original stadium that Orlando played in 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 MLS then you're unlikely to have Miami or Atlanta now there's no way that you should be taking it away from Miami and Atlanta I, I, I don't believe that at all um so you just feel like there was always going to be someone that missed out but I do, from a geographical point of view, I do think um, Orlando would have made some sense, but uh, I'm sure there's I'm sure there's reasons behind their decisions. Um, maybe it'll be nice for me to go be in the country that the World Cup is is happening in, soak in the atmosphere, but not have the the stress of what I imagine will be hyper hyper security everywhere um, in those cities. So. Um, Maybe I'll use it as a base and pop down to Miami or um, pop up to Atlanta. But yeah, someone was always going to miss out. I am gutted that it's that it's Orlando, mainly for selfish reasons. But I actually think whenever the US men's national team hold games in Orlando, they always say, you know, the atmosphere is incredible. They love playing there. So it kind of seems a bizarre one to me, but maybe I'm just bitter. <laughs> Possibly. You do get bitter about a lot of things that involve MLS, especially when Orlando are involved. 
Um, yeah, it's uh, it's a weird one, really, because you've got to remember as well that there's only two MLS, uh, well, in America, obviously, in Canada, it's got Vancouver and Toronto, but there's only two uh, MLS venues that are being used in the States. The rest are all NFL venues. Mm. So for us watching MLS, it's not necessarily going to be a, um, you know, say I was getting excited because I thought, oh, it's going to be like, weird because you're watching the likes of England playing at MLS venues. We're not really... Um, and obviously you got Mexico. So off the I top of my head, you... is is that Atlanta and Seattle? Yes. Yeah, but shared again, shared stadium. So really, MLS is not going to look in here at all. No, exactly. Which I mean, you can understand because of um, attendances. You know, NFL stadiums are far bigger. You know, we watch the Super Bowl every year in the fantastic venues, so you can understand it. Um, for me, I look at think well. Yes, uh, the, you you know England playing in a big stadium or America or um, you know Mexico, Italy, you know these that does make sense. Uh, whereas if you've got Saudi Arabia versus I don't know Senegal, for example, um, maybe you'd have to have that at BMO Place, perhaps or BMO Field. Sorry. Um, you know, I don't think that would necessarily work in a massive stadium. So there are probably logistical issues. There could be some empty seats at some venues. Um, and there's going to be more teams in this. This I think there's 48 teams is there in this World Cup. So you, know, you are going to have a lot more of those matches. So, yeah, maybe I would have liked a few more MLS venues in there to sort of cope with the, the smaller matches. But saying that, you know, it's America. We love America. We love everything big. They want the big stadiums. Um, so uh, either way, I think they'll put on a great show. I think the the, the states and cities that these venues, um, uh, you know, these matches are going to be in, are going to really embrace it. I think it's the 250th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence, so I'm sure, like as we know, America will really uh, bump up that, and they'll really, um, you know, say that it's America's tournament, it's America's anniversary. So I think it's going to be a fantastic um, event. Something I did read, though, which made me laugh, is that I think it was the other day, maybe in Miami or LA, it was actually as hot as it is in Qatar at the moment. Um, and famously, Qatar can't host the Summer World Cup. So uh, maybe from an England point point of view, uh, in our climate, maybe it would be better if we could be based, I don't know, New York, Philadelphia, uh, Canada. Hopefully some England matches up there. We'll play in the snow and we'll win everything. Other than that, we're stuffed. So uh, good luck if your local, um, if your state or your city, if you're based in the States or Canada, is hosting a match. I hope you get to go because, uh, you know, here in England, you went at the European Championships last year. It's fantastic. It's, uh, it's something that we would love to see a World Cup in England. So we are very jealous. Um, but uh, hopefully you've already booked your, your, your accommodation. Hopefully I can and we can do MLS UK show World Cup edition live from the States and Canada or Mexico, which I'm now accustomed to. As well. <laughs> you can take me to Mexico. That's fine. <laughs> uh, right. Back to modern day MLS. And the third thing we're going to talk about this week is New York City FC. We had Ian Joy on the show and he was waxing lyrical about how great uh, uh, NYC FC are doing, how this project that they've got, how brilliant they are. They could potentially win a second MLS Cup in a row. And now Ronnie Dyler is left for standard Liège. Uh, is this a surprise to you? No, um, not at all. I think it was who's going to go first, Tati Castellanos or Ronnie Dyer. Um, and unfortunately, it's the coach. Um, look, they won MLS Cup. They drew attention to themselves, unfortunately. And that's the way that it works in MLS. When Europe comes calling, it doesn't matter whether you're a coach or a player. It's a big thing. It's a big decision to make. And uh, I completely understand his reasonings for, uh, for departing. Middle of the season, not ideal. But New York City are a, a, a professional, you know, all that's, let's be honest, all that's missing, and, and Ian, Ian touched on it as well, all that's missing is that stadium. They're a professional outfit owned by a huge global organization um, with this, you know, in the city group. So there will have been plans in place, um, contingency plans in place for his departure. And uh, I, I wish him, I wish him a lot of luck, but it's, it's awkward for the team, especially when things are going so well. Yeah, I mean, it is disappointing because, um, you know, I did feel that NYCFC could build something, a bit of a legacy, some, you know, it's something on par with what Seattle have kind of done. And we could have NYCFC as the Seattle of the East. 
Um, don't get me wrong, as, as you said there, I think there is a plan there and I think NYCFC long-term will be fine. Short-term, though, this season, we saw them draw at home to Colorado the other day. My my thoughts are now, whereas I was very, um, you know, I was saying to everyone who, who said, who do you think will win MLS Cup? I think NYCFC were actually my favourites the way they were going. Now, I don't know. I think uh, they'll make the playoffs, but I think their odds have, have got higher. But then again, I think they've got to look long term. And I guess this is the, the problem with MLS being a, a summer league is that unfortunately when the European clubs come calling, it's it's mid-season and it does disrupt your season. But um, you touched on Tati Castellanos there. He's been linked with a host of clubs, Leeds United being one of them. Um, do you think it's vital for them to try and keep hold of him for a bit longer now just for this transition? Or do you think it's inevitable? Are they going to head into Ju- end of July, August with two of their big Big names in you know in their in their team, if you will, their their uh, backroom team and their on the pitch team missing. Absolutely, I think we all know that Castellanos is not going to be here this time next year. But it's about how long they can hold on to him to minimise that time where they're without somebody of that um, somebody who can add that as much as he does to that team pretty irreplaceable I know Ian Joy said that um, they've always got somebody else ready they want to give somebody else a chance and they always uh, bring in you through which I really respect but ultimately there's nobody in the NYCFC Academy or uh, or under 21s that's that's going to be at that level so it's important that now they've lost the coach they try and just stabilize for as long as possible um, bids will be coming in left right and center I'm sure um, but it has to work for all parties and I feel like his cost might his price might have just gone up a little bit now that they're trying to stabilize the club. Yeah, that's the dangerous thing now is that for any European side, and I know as I said, Leeds United are interested, um, maybe one or two others from the Premier League. I think they'll have to pay a bit more now that their uh, their head coach has gone. Um, right, let's have a look at the fourth thing this week in MLS, and it's a, a story that we seem to have been talking about for months and months and months. It's finally happened. Uh, Cellini has signed for LAFC. Um, he's obviously uh, a, a world-class defender, one of the best defenders we've seen in many years in Europe. He's made the move to LAFC. And what surprised me was he's not a DP. He's coming out of TAM and the international roster spot. So uh, it's either a stroke of genius from LAFC, that one, or they've been reading from the Inter Miami playbook <laughs> on uh, getting players in. Yeah, yeah. Um... I suppose it depends on on what you're going to have to pay these players. Um, you know, if it's not an obscene amount of money, which I suppose it's not going to be in, in relation to some of the bigger names in the league, um, you know, he's not a star striker that's coming in in his prime. Uh, so it might well be that, you know, if they've got enough Tam and Gam knocking around, um, that they can buy that buy that contract down, make sure they're still below that wage cap. And do you remember the the original LAFC? We used to look at that squad and go, how is that under the salary cap? Like it was crazy. Um, so we know they're very good at what they do there. Um, and yeah, I, 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 look, especially if he's coming in and he's not taking a DP slot, it's a great sign in. There's absolutely no argument. There's no need to delve into any, uh, any stats, any facts, any figures. You're getting... Chiellini and he's not taking up a DP slot game on yeah exactly and it's refreshing to see um like a defender of that that class come in because we've that used to seeing strikers and midfielders it's going to be really interesting to see how a defender does um you know against the, some strikers in this league that have got frightening pace and some midfielders so Uh, Yeah, I think it's going to be very interesting to see that. But also, you know, this is a great deal for LAFC, not only because, as you mentioned, they're not spending money from the the DP pot, but actually, you know, his his experience, you know, last year he won the European Championships. You know, that experience is there. He's won Champions Leagues, uh, Serie A's. um, You know, if he can pass that on, it could be invaluable to LAFC's defenders and the rest of the squad, actually, especially the younger players, um, you know, you could take some from him. He has said that he is looking long term as as to get experience here. Um, you know, I don't think he's going to stay for four or five years, but he has he is already looking at say coaching, uh, the impact he can have on the uh, younger players, and I think that's really refreshing to to hear rather than someone coming in and and making false promises. I think he's really trying to get this experience and really learn from it himself. 
exactly and uh, you know it, it's not the worst place in the world to be um you know it, it's going to be it's going to be his level he's going to be able to contribute he's going to be a big figure in the changing room with all of his experience which you mentioned and you know he's not daft he knows he's not he's not young anymore he's no spring chicken he's going to be looking at what happens after after he retires and it and it could just be that he gets an opportunity within LAFC or certainly within the league uh, league wide um to to do some coaching maybe work his way into management so really good move for all parties and hopefully we see more of this now that that apple tv money we we mentioned earlier um is going to be coming towards the league yeah and this could be the start of uh, it could be the start of something big earlier as the uh the song goes um uh, right well that's it for stoppage time this week uh we bear, bear in mind we are uh, there is some more news on LAFC, potential news about Carlos Vea. His contract's only running until the 1st of um, July. Hopefully, by the time we do a full episode next week, we should know more about what's going to happen with that. So we'll chat about that next week. Uh, remember, MLS UK show is sponsored by Soccer90.com. Head there, get all the latest kits. They are being um, released on there as well. I know the latest uh, Real Madrid shirt is on there. Uh, the Juventus shirts, um, you know, and then they've also got... Uh, the Unity pre-match tops as well. They've got Dallas's on there as well. And uh, on all the US men's national team stuff, if you want to get ready for this winter's World Cup. Whilst you're there, if you put stuff in your um, in the checkout, in your basket, don't forget to put the code MLSUK in the discount code and you get 20% off. Courtesy of Soccer90 and me and Elliot. We'll be back with a full episode next week. So much to talk about, uh, including three points for Orlando. It's been a while since I've said that. Hey, three points for Atlanta as well. It's been a while as well. Don't care about that. Uh, (laughs) Right, that's it from us. Elliot, happy birthday for tomorrow. Enjoy it. Have a wonderful time, even though by the sounds of it, you are going to be doing nothing at all. Uh, we will if you if you're listening to this before Tuesday, don't forget to tweet us uh, your birthday messages for Elliot at MLS UK Show at Elliot Holman on Twitter as well. Uh, right, well that's it, Elliot. You can say one last sentence, whatever you want to say, and I'll end it with the one word I always say. Okay, uh, any sentence at all? Any sentence at all? I'm still thirty. As of now, not for long. See ya. <laughs>